we borrowing from everyone else instead of walking into our own true calling? So often we look at someone else's journey and place it as our own. Maybe this is you legitimizing your self-worth through someone else's social strategy, someone else's blessings and them landing your dream job, or someone else's marriage, having a child, dating, you know, the list goes on. I'm personally in a place where I've been challenging my purpose. What is my path? How do I find meaning? And how do I find value in the world? I've noticed I've been seeking connection through community and the words that keep coming to mind to me are you belong, you are valued, and you are loved. Hello, hi, my name is Tova. I'm the small business owner of the shop St. Florence where I sell ceramics and other home decor goods. So my art style is pretty broad, but I wanted to show you an example of my ceramics, which I feel kind of leans towards more of a minimalistic style. Um, so here's a piece I made like back in 2021. It was a custom glaze and I have like the signature um, kind of trim at the bottom, but, uh, and then the inside's a bit like a frosty. Um, this one is cut like shorter on one side, side, but most of them are just very simple art objects and I've been leaning more towards this like uh, more functional style lately, but just to give you a sense of my style. In today's video, I, I wanted to share with you a bit more about who I am in my brand and um, we will be throwing some clay today and glazing a few items. And I wanted to share with you my journey as a business owner and like how I've been transitioning into relaunching my business. Um, and then this season's challenges in how I've been taking care of myself through that process. So something to note, moving forward in future videos, I'm going to be doing more faceless and voiceless um, videos. And, and this is just like me, and I, I recognize like me showing my face, it's like a very vulnerable space. Um, and I wanna do that, I wanna show who the artist, who the face is behind the artwork, but I also recognize that, and I want to acknowledge that my legitimate concern of um, like data and that like my face, who I am, the data that's being used on these platforms are being scraped for facial recognition and voice recognition technology. And so I just want to like limit the amount of my interactions doing so and and just like be really intentional in how I show up to you guys. I already know my data is out in the world, but I want to limit these interactions from my ease of mind. So most of my videos will be like me showing my work and my art process and less about like, ta-da, here I am. Um, so you'll see a bit of both, but thank you. So a quick summary of who I am. So I live in Oakland, California. I've lived here for over 13 years now, and I'm self-employed freelance. I'm a consultant in architectural and interior design, marketing, brand, creative, social, animation, product, all the things, all the good things. Um, so I'm in the process of starting my own tech nonprofit and joining a fiscal sponsor. I would love to share more with you about what that is, but I hope to share that like in a future video once I feel more comfortable and confident in that realm. But I'm not trying to make money. I try to hang out with friends where we go on road trips to one country and just um, go to go do picnics, do self care activities like spa days. But and I love doing crafty things. Here I am. Here's all of me, and let's get started. So this time I'm choosing to invest in myself and not live in this kind of scarcity mindset that I've been living in before. Um, I am purchasing a ceramics wheel and I went to my local clay store to pick up the wheel and pick up a lot of other goodies. And I'm just so excited for this opportunity to be able to have a ceramics wheel for myself and not have to actually go into a studio. Um, to do my work so this is where I can like really like focus on my practice you will see this as like my most authentic self because since this, the ceramics wheel is in my living room um, I will be wearing slippers sometimes or like pajamas and 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 I hope that 
y'all can just see me for who I am and, and, and see this journey along the way with me. So my shop is named after my mother, Florence, who was a super creative and artistic person. And I also thought she was a saint. She was a generous giver. And years ago, she owned her own business and um, she made clothing and she taught me how to sew. She taught me how to do a lot of different crafts. And I wanted to name my business after her. And so it's called St. Florence, the Community Giver. And when I first started this, this was in, I think, 2015, um, I tried creating a subscription box company and kind of was a flop, but um, it was it was a great opportunity to like learn um, about marketing and how to figure out who my target audience is and how to even just like start a business. So that was a unique experience for me, but it kind of flopped because, I mean, one, you kind of need a lot of funds to start a, a subscription company and, and bulk order purchases for the different products inside of it. And as I was selling it, I recognized that people, and one of the things I would put in my box is uh, my ceramics, and I noticed people were really excited about that. And so I kind of leaned in more towards selling my ceramics, and that's where I kind of pivoted into um, really focusing on my craft and ceramics. Within the past two years, though, I went on an art hiatus and I took a break from all art, um, and except for my day job. Like, I was still doing art as a design manager, um, but I stopped posting on social. I got off of Instagram. I, um, even when I would hang out with friends, like, we would, like, a friend wanted to, like, paint pumpkins, and I was like, I will come and hang out, but I don't want to paint pumpkins. And I just really just wanted to take a break from art. I don't know. I was just dealing with some things with the whole idea of it. And um, I also canceled my ceramics membership at the clay studio that I was going to. Um, so along the way, like over the, the past two years, I haven't been doing anything. I did do a few like sculpting um, ornament pieces for holiday craft fair this past winter but um, a couple friends have been like asking along this journey like hey like do you want to make some ceramics and I'm like no it's too expensive to get into the studio it's it's like to start a new membership up and so I, I just kind of like made a lot of excuses for I mean the fact that like it costs a lot and it does and and so I kind of wanted to acknowledge that like Yes, ceramics in this process does cost a lot, but I'm recognizing now I need to invest in myself for this journey if I really want to like do. It. Um, so I, I was just like thinking about how much does a ceramics will cost, and how much can I like sell and invest back in, and and just like actually practice my technique and craft along the way. I also recognized during the season, I didn't want to perform for others. I didn't want to promote my work and promote myself. And I just wanted to come as I was. So this was a challenging to me because um, I do see that there, that's kind of like a little bit of a mistake because it's like, how will people ever see my work if I'm not able to show it on social media? Um, but I did feel like there was this like idea of having to like always be performing and I didn't want to always be in that space. Um, but I'm still an artist. I'm still a graphic designer. I'm still a ceramicist. And just because I don't um, show up on social media all the time it doesn't mean I'm none of those things. And my student loan debt definitely shows me I am still those things because I'm paying for that right now. <laughs> so now I come back to the term the community giver and how I want to show up. I've been thinking about it and what values I'm looking for. Yo. Yo. Here we are. Here we are. We're gonna fix a car. We're we gonna fix a car. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do the alternator. And we don't know what to do. Lately, I've been dealing through some challenges. I'm happy to have recorded this moment where a friend came through to help me fix my car. Also, some YouTube tutorials lie that it would only take five minutes to fix an alternator. Whatever you say it. 
Although this was fun to do, to do, I now have a growing respect for mechanics and we'll just get this fixed next time in the shop. Here we go, test it out. How did we do? So let's mix some clay together, okay? So first I wanna show you my style and then I'm going to be a little quiet and allow you to enjoy the soothing creative process of this. Um, note first that since it's been a while since I've been on the wheel, I'm a bit rusty. Please find patience in me and recognize that I will always be learning and um, trying to perfect my craft. So my style of ceramics is super minimalist. It's most of my work I've considered it as art and less of functional objects. This piece that I'm showing is on black clay body and I'm using like a white glaze underneath and then a black glaze on top. This actual um, glaze is a custom glaze from another student at the clay shop that I was going to. And that was one of the unique things about going into a studio is you can um, be able to like learn from other people and, and, and people are also willing to share with you some of their techniques. So this was a really beautiful glaze that I'm not taking credit for, but like the glaze that someone else in the studio provided me and I'm very thankful for that opportunity. And last year, I moved into the space of functionality, making dinnerware, specifically for a dinner party. So when I actually created that mug that I showed you a little bit earlier, um, I actually made that mug in 2022, and then I went on the hiatus. And then I sold it at this craft fair at the end of last year, and it just, people, everyone wanted it, and it just kind of showed me, I was like, okay, well, I, I should maybe just like look at what's actually working and what do people like so I will move more into this functionality in making more dinnerware pieces and I hope you guys like it so I consider my pieces still works of art most of my glazes are custom made and my pieces are not one-offs that you just like want to tuck into the corner of your cabinet along with your other one-off free swag company mugs you received I would like to think my pieces are functional um, they're being used so you might take this out on a picnic or you might bring this with you car camping and you might be like inserting some wine or a crisp cocktail for a dinner party event um, or it's some, I, I think of this as like a piece that's on display for like a tablescape or home decor or you are like a real estate person and you're wanting to stage a beautiful um, house going on sale so like think of it like as beautiful artware that you can also use in 2020, I participated in Clay Room's Warp Art Residency, which got me free classes in studio access, plus an art gallery show at the end of the season. And I'm deeply appreciated for this experience because with Kevin Walker and the Clay Room, um, they really came together to provide diverse artists opportunities to thrive in the art community. And I feel very like grateful for the opportunity to like learn from him and learn how to make glazes. Um, and also just like, um, one of the things I focused on a lot was like this, just a basic cylinder, but um, applying unique glazes and my own custom glazes on top. So I'm taking a break of talking just to enjoy the art process. So something that I strongly cherish is that throwing clay is art therapy.
On this day, I took a break to attend Creative Growth's 50th anniversary party. I signed up to volunteer during the event, and I love this organization because they support individuals with disabilities, creative art. All of the artwork is so beautiful and so unique, and, um, and it's also just like in a lot of different mediums. And the shirt I'm wearing that you see earlier in this video, um, it's I actually purchased this from that, that event. I love it. Okay, so now it's Friday night. I'm feeling a bit introverted today and I chose to stay in. I'm watching the TV series Palm Royale while glazing a few pieces. The ideas behind the letters, um, so I was thinking of like super cute kitchen core um, clay products and along with like classic dinnerware, this is more of like the playful side of like creating actual like refrigerator magnets. So as I move into this new season of relaunching my ceramics business and starting a new nonprofit, friends moving away, grant rejections, freelance rejections, blah, 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 I would be remiss to not acknowledge how tired and depressed this season can get. Being here in the Bay Area can be tough because it's a transient city. People come and people go um, without even a care of thoughts of friendships that they leave behind. And I've contemplated so many times why am I still here? What is my purpose while I'm still here? So all these things, it's a tiring road um, and it's a unique season. A time, it's a time of preparation for me and I believe it's a time of refresh. It's a time, it's a new chapter and I'm setting things anew in my life. So whether you're a therapist in a spiritual community group, uh, you go to a synagogue, a quiet retreat, um, wherever you find community, it helps to balance yourself and, and, and just to know that like there's other people around you that you're not alone in the thing that you're going through. Um, and, and recently I've been trying to do spiritual check-ins with myself in, in talking to God and I started attending a new church to find community. And I've also been nourishing my soul through being vulnerable and even just sharing this channel with you is a very vulnerable place for me. And so um, acknowledging that this season has been a bit tough, but um, I'm hoping that like other people can maybe even just get inspired by me. Here's some books that I've been currently reading that's especially interesting and inspiring in this season and how I think about the value of community, gathering and relaunching my business. And then I want to acknowledge that I also do some audiobooks while I'm throwing clay. I just finished The Solace of Open Spaces. Um, it's very poetic, like around like nature writing. And, and then the With the Fire on High, a beautiful book. Um, and although the main character in this story is a lot younger, she's in high school. I just felt very, like very much relatable to the fact that someone who's like trying to really explore and take on a passion along with some other challenging moments of their life. So I want to end here with my glow up era. Um, so I got a massage at this super luxurious hotel in Sausalito, California, which is like kind of close to San Francisco on the other side of Golden Gate Bridge. And it was at Cavallo Point Lodge. And this was a special one-off, um, just like massage thing I did with a friend, but it was a reminder to take care of myself. First off, I didn't know this spot existed. It was kind of like hiding and tucked away, like close to the Golden Gate Bridge. 
and it was like a little oasis. It was really beautiful. You could see San Francisco in the distance. It was surrounded by nature and I loved all the architecture. It was like modern meets historic vintage vibe. It was beautiful. And they also had like a warm salted pool that you could um, that you could just like swim in after your massage. And, and then the food there was really healthy and it just felt like the perfect balance to a healing process and healing my body. Um, this was a really lovely day to just be quiet and refresh my soul. So thank you for watching this video. It's a work of love of me being vulnerable and me sharing my art process with you. And I hope to see you again soon.